Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. This is day number three of the Redemption Series. My name is Osmo Cutie, and I'm joined by Fro Dan. Yo. How's it going, Dan? Um, well, we've had two or three matches so far. We're about to have our semifinals, so I'm excited to see where this is starting to ramp up. Uh, we have four players remaining, but only one person can come to the land, get their all-expenses-paid trip. Pretty sure ESL is rooting for the North American guys, <laughs> but I know some people really want to see more diversity. Yeah. Uh, Spider or Wei Spider's Roger from Taiwan, Corneco from Japan, Sinosaur's from Canada, but he identifies himself primarily more with the you know the Chinese scene. I think. Yeah, he was born there. Yeah, and then uh, Luigi is of course hailing all the way from North America. Mm -hmm. He's from uh, New York, so it's still a long ways from from California, but not quite as far. Uh, the season one uh, legendary series. Uh, finals had a few Taiwanese players, Weifu and Pinpingho, and actually the translator for the media piece that we saw earlier was actually Pinpingho, who was talking to Roger. So, oh, that's funny. Uh, very tight-knit group of guys. They they all um, practice with each other. You include Tom in that. Uh, 60229. Yep, Tom 60229. He's forever changed that number for me. Why? Because now whenever I see the number 60,229, <laughs> I'm going to think of Tom. It happens quite often. I'd assume. No, it's never happened. <laughs> but every time I do see that number, I think of Tom. Well, I'm good. also because Tom six zero two two nine is my doppelganger. Oh yeah, that's true. He From does. like a certain angle, Tom six he looks exactly like me. Now I understand there's a lot of jokes out there already about you know whatever trauma, Maz, Hafu, Masan type of thing. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> specifically with Tom, there was this one angle at BlizzCon where I was watching him and introducing him, and I really thought that was me for a second. <laughs> That's got to be a really scary experience. It was a experience. trippy moment because I thought like the camera transitioned and changed away from me, but yeah. it, it wasn't me, but I thought it was me. So I stood up straighter like because he was slouching <laughs> over, and I was like, wait, that's not me. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a little bit of a weird experience. We'll be seeing yeah. Tom tomorrow, actually. Yeah, he's in Group D. Yeah, um, so he participated in, in the Legendary Series earlier. Uh, but right now, it's Roger's time to shine. Or not shine. And, of course, he'll be facing off. <laughs> or <against> not shine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> be, yeah, okay. it's just a, a really funny way to put it. I guess I haven't really considered that. Yeah, and he'll be facing off against Luigi's, who we've already seen today. Uh, he's warmed up. Uh, he's rearing and ready to go. He had a really good series early in the day against Azuzu. Mm -hmm. He was 3-0. Well, I do want to emphasize that Spider Roger, or some guy, it's, gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Roger. <laughs> Just, I want to emphasize that Roger's up at like 7 a.m. And Corneco, he was up at like 5 a.m. So really tough hours for those guys to play. Mm -hmm. Spider Roger, a big fan of Spider-Man. Yeah, but Spider Roger doesn't re quite roll off the tongue. Maybe it was Spider Raj. No. It but then you confuse off. him for like an Indian superhero. Yeah. Because like Raj is a really popular name. Maybe true. It's like a, sounds like a really bad... Bollywood Spider video <laughs> or Bollywood movie. Like a music parody video. They yeah, make a lot exactly. Of the Indian people are so funny, man. When they make the parody music videos, I laugh so much. Yeah, they turn out more they're, movies. They're so funny. I love them. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to jump into the first match here. It is going to be Luigi's on the Warlock. And this was the zoo uh, the, with the Argent Squire, so a little bit different take on it. It yeah. was like uh, uh, sort of the mid-range zoo or uh, I don't know. It's it's the the line blurs let's so just call, much. Let's just say like a, a retro zoo because he's got zoo. the dark iron dwarf, yeah. the argent squires. Uh, those are much more board centric approaches. But he still has cards like um, implosion, and we actually didn't get to see much of the deck, so it's possible that it tops out with right. uh, some bigger threats. We saw Sea Giant as well, and of course Spider Roger, Spider Raj, <laughs> Spider Raj <laughs> does everything a Raj would do. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Two Argent Squires and a Void Walker. That fills out the first two turns curve here. And we have that Patron Warrior from Roger. And I do know that if there's one type of deck that the Asian uh, Asian scene loves, it was Miracle Rogue. They loved Miracle Rogue to death. Guys like Frozen Ice, Tom, all of them maxed out at like thousands upon thousands of games to climb the number one rank in Asia mm -hmm. with Miracle Rogue. And Patron Warrior is reminiscent of it. Got a lot of combos, got a lot of draws, got a lot of ways to survive and uh, ultimately plan out through counting. Yeah. But I, I would say, I would assume that Patron Warrior is even harder than Miracle Rogue was. I know people always say Miracle yeah. Rogue is one of the epitomes of difficulty in decks, yeah. but 
Oh. I think Patient War is up there too. Miracle Rogue was uh, had like the the one win condition, the singular win condition, but the hard part was getting there. With Patient Warrior, it's still hard getting there, but then you have multiple ways that you win, and the ways that you do win right. are harder to accomplish. Uh, they take more thought, they take more card combos. Um, it, it's a lot harder to spot instead of just, you know, Leroy, Shadow Step, Leroy, mm -hmm. Gold Blood, whatever. So I, I would agree that it is a tough deck. Patient Warrior is one of the toughest decks, toughest new decks that has come out in a mm -hmm. long, long time. And I'm, I'm, is there any deck that's harder right now to play? I would argue maybe, maybe Range Shaman. I would argue Freeze Mage is up there to play co effectively a, yeah, in a competitive Freeze environment. Yeah, Freeze Mage is definitely pretty hard. Yeah, Shaman's also difficult, but that's because Shaman is not strong. So you could say its difficulty level is re directly correlated to uh, its potency. There's less resources for right. players to learn, and less people that play it for players to theorycraft. So yeah, um, fair enough. That makes it tough as well. Grim Patron Warriors approaching like pretty good levels of refinement already just because so many players are playing with it and experimenting with it. It's like the fastest the deck has ever um, been refined to the point where it is now. All right, Implosion, pretty systematic here. It doesn't really matter what it rolls damage-wise, but in terms of getting the amount of imps, absolutely, four imps is problematic. Although he does have the Whirlwind primed and ready to go. That's the one thing you're worried about is the Acolyte Whirlwind play. Now, he doesn't have the Acolyte, but he's got the Whirlwind. And imagine if he had the Volcanic Drake. It'd be for one mana. The value. Yeah, the value. The volcanic Drake, I think, is a slightly underrated card. In, in, I think it's a, a sick card. Yeah. But, you know, I'm one of the few people who like it a lot. Some people feel like it's just, like, meh, very average. But I think all people have to do is find a way to build a legitimate dragon control deck. And then they'll see like the just the absolute craziness of Volcanic, and it could be as simple as just waiting for a, one or two more cards to make it really good, like the next expansion. As soon as like something comes out, mm -hmm. then Volcanic Drake becomes much stronger. Yeah, I like Volcanic Drake in aggro decks. This allows you to get that six damage out for usually like three mana if you yep. can, and you can if you can choose where to trade your creatures into. This is a tough position because you don't actually have a way to remove the Thorazin. Even with the Defender. And even though we can see that the uh, Ever Thorazin really wasn't that effective for Roger, Luigi doesn't know that. So he could be quite frightened right. by the possibility of what was in oh. that hand. Well, he's gotten a way to deal with it now. But it, that requires him to make the rest of his turn pretty inefficient. Mm -hmm. He would skip out on developing a minion. Uh, that costs higher. My shield for so he's gonna look like he picks off the armor smith for a free 1-1 one, one, and then push with the egg. Now, interestingly enough, because he did that, he was expecting maybe the Thorson trades into it, but he's got execute for zero mana. Yeah. And if he picks up a weapon, a fiery war axe, this is gonna have a huge series of tempo swings. Mm. Okay. It's a rough hand. Not many ways to get value out of this Battle Rage. No creatures. The Dread Corsairs are... Uh, we can, you can Battle Rage for two. That's not bad. Yeah. You saved the Execute for the Doom Guards, probably. <laughs> but those Dread Corsairs being reduced is really not that big of a deal because they'd be free with Death Button anyway. Interrange will cost three mana if you dubs. That's how deep it is. Nice. How would the Dread Corsairs work? If they, uh, like they, if a, a card... Any, it's just anything plus five. No, like, well, no, well not for Loath, though, because they're not spells. I'm so talking about, like, for a Nerubian Weblord. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were just asking about the Or not a Nerubian Weblord, but, like, Mana Wraith. Would it be the same effect that Loath has on spells? Would it I, just... I, probably. Okay. I've actually never been in that situation. Where's your passion, TJ? Look at the effect of Imp Gang boss. Leaving trails behind to the 1-1s one allowed to pick up trades and kill off the stores. Yeah. Really effective stuff overall. The always scary moment is to cross your fingers for no Warsong Commander Grim Patron, because this is quite the board for it. That's a juicy board. Draw for Warsong Commander. Yeah, that's not it. I mean, he's got time. He's not under 
the most insane pressure so he can go for a cool Taskmaster on the Acolyte to draw. Yep. But this gives an opportunity for Luigi to start trading in his low attack stuff. That's true, but he's drawing more cards still. Alien King boss is really hard to trade in without still giving your opponent more patrons. More targets. patrons, yeah. What's he gonna get? Another patron. What does the Drake Corsair say? Blood and thunder. That's what I thought. Yeah. I was leaning towards that. It's yeah, it's a little bit of a weird mix, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Yeah. Definitely agree. You know what? It actually makes more sense if it's Flood and Thunder. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. true. Flood and Thunder. Another juggle. Hits the Acolyte. Denies the card draw. But more importantly, he just is able to get everything out. So, now he uses the Doom Guard to push a little bit. That's going to activate the Execute. And it's still enough room for Spider Raj to get the Warzone Commander <laughs> And the Grim Patron. And if we're lucky, he might even break into song. I like a lot of the sequencing here. Um, it's still going to be tough to guarantee that your board is safe to the Grim Patron. In fact, I don't think it is no matter what because of the inner rage. Yeah. And in fact, it'd be a full board clear if Warsong Commander was strong. Yeah, it's not, though. Inner rage, <laughs> execute. Yeah. Guys had the death spite though. It's sort of a shame, if only because if he had been able to wait one more turn with the death spite, he could set up a turn where he could make a lot of good patrons, but he just doesn't have enough health to be able to survive an onslaught. I kind of can. The the Drake Corsair still gives him some health. Ah, uh, it looks like he might So there's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, seventeen damage on board. And he's at seventeen, nineteen health effectively. He can execute the uh, yeah. the Doom Guard as well, which is probably the best play. He has to, because that doesn't even count juggles. There's gonna be at least two juggles, so he'd effectively be as long as the yeah he has enough damage to spread apart as well. So if he doesn't do anything here, there would be 19 damage on the board as long as he just draws into two creatures. Sets up patron number one just to try and get some semblance of board. He's going to force uh, the Nerubian to attack into it. That's actually pretty smart. If he forces the Nerubian to attack into it, then he doesn't have to worry about attacking into the Nerubian for the weapon charge mm -hmm. or giving up the patient. So he's basically all in on the war song. Luigi's looked slightly confused mm -hmm. by the Grim Patient being put down. Ooh, that's perfect. Lotheb and Sea Giant. And his opponent can't even brawl. Yep. Basically, secure the game. I mean, it was looking pretty bad for for Roger. Yeah, to begin Even with, without it wasn't it. very sharp. The thing is, oh wait, he doesn't want to juggle. <laughs> the thing about uh, playing the Lotheb and the Sea Giant was the, the juggles on the, the Grim Patron. So now we have eight health remaining. It has to be the Warsong Commander! Oh man, that's pretty exciting stuff. I don't even... Oh wait, he can't... That's oh, not enough. Oh, he can't armor up. No. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, actually, he's going to be able to get a couple of these from the extra 1-1. One, one. Right, but he can't, he can't deal with the Sea Giant. The sea Giant just kills him straight up. Yeah. Wait, can he attack with the Death Bite and spawn enough to kill it? Um, no, he can't. He'll only spawn two extras. Oh, no, no, no he, he can. Yeah, he can actually. Yeah, he can. He can kill the Sea Giant. Oh, wow. wow. He navigated that really well. Yeah, we forgot about the extra whirlwind effect there. But he's going to be left with virtually nothing. Right, this Grim Patron's not spawning another Grim Patron. Yeah. Ah, oh, interesting. So Luigi, Luigi just can't actually kill him right now. Was hoping to tap into Doom Guard. And now he can't play a spell. 
And he already used his other Grim Patron. That doesn't help at all. Yeah. He needed that to be Commanding Shout or something. Um... Well, what's the best play here? Not Whirlwind. Because <laughs> there's no way you can navigate it where Whirlwind has any effect. You have to kill the Loat Dev, like with both of these creatures. Well, you can kill off the Imp and then try to push if you're if you're assuming your opponent can't draw two damage. Which is kind of unlikely. Right. But if you're playing around, like, power overwhelming, either way you die because it would be seven damage, even if it was just on the Imp. Yeah. So you might as well just take the risk, but... Uh, yeah, this makes a lot of sense, considering that's his... That's, like, technically oh. his best chance to play. Yeah. But he's got a lot of damage. Uh, and Luigi's was... He had his number from the beginning. This is partially why Zoo is still pretty strong, because the pressure puts on Grim Patron is a little bit too much sometimes. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of turns where Roger was on, like, a Warsong Commander draw to completely turn the game around, but... I mean, that happens a lot against Zoo, where all they do is they, like you said, they put on the pressure, and it, sometimes it's just too fast to where mm -hmm. it, they don't give you opportunities to draw. And the Warsaw Commander ended up being like four turns too late. Yeah. Which is way too late. So uh, Luigi is going to take a lead up. He's actually undefeated today in the game so, so far. So far, he's 4-0. Yeah. and oh. Yeah. And he's got a pretty good lineup, I would say, against uh, the rest of this. He's got Rogue, and he's got his own Warrior. But keep in mind, he's Control Warrior. Yeah. Control Warrior against the Patron Warrior is great. Maybe that's why Oil Rogue's starting to come back, because you can deal with uh, Patron. Patron. But then the, all the 1-1 one, one tokens from yeah. Rogue scare me a little bit. A lot of players were saying, I have been saying, that Rogue does well against Patron Warrior, but sometimes it seems like some of your damage w won't line up. Um, well, you got Blade Flurry. That's like really good to deal with things. And then you have a lot of three minion, three attack minions that match up against the Grim Patron. But you can probably Berserker gets eviscerated. You can play the matchup differently um, as the Warrior player. That's you true. can play very aggressive style, not as combo oriented around Grim Patrons. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or you can just play the sort of um, War of Attrition where you just kind of armor up and try and make the Rogue run out of resources. Can you play that as Patron Warrior against I Rogue? think so. Mm. I've done it a couple times, but... It feels unlikely considering that Armor Smiths are your only source of gain health and you don't pressure as as strong as Control Warrior in the late stages of the game? Well, you have the... Yeah. With, like, huge bombs like Alex Straza and stuff. Your removal lines up nicely with the threats that Rogue puts out because it's, like, three threes and mm. and Violet Teacher is, like, all they're going to put out. And we saw yeah. earlier that even Grim Patron Warrior can gain absurd amounts of health. It does feel on the more optimistic side, that's for sure. Yeah. It's, very, it's a secondary to a secondary win condition. Druid is the one that's choice chosen by Roger. That means that uh, Luigi's is the one disadvantaged here. He's got a control warrior, but it's just pretty basic control warrior. We haven't seen dragons in it, unfortunately, beyond Alex Straza. Luigi seems like a... I don't want to call him a basic kind of guy, because that kind of sounds like an insult. But he, Well, it is if you say it to a girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Luigi's is... Uh, he likes just standard, classic decks. He doesn't like to try and... It doesn't seem like he likes to try and innovate. He just likes oh. to stick with what's known. Get wrecked. Yeah. Do not get wrecked. Yeah. It works for him. He plays him nearly flawlessly. Yeah. You don't have to you, innovate to be considered a good player. You just called him boring. He's not boring. Because his play is fun and interesting because he wins. <laughs> Winning is fun and interesting. Winning is fun. It's yeah. not always interesting, though. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, it, uh, you know you guys should lose interest at all. Yeah. In fact, there's plenty of room for these guys to surprise us. But yeah. in terms of uh, expectation, it's it's definitely a uh, pretty run of the mill. Although the cool thing is the rogue. I mean, the, he is bringing a yeah. different class to the table that Lu most people have ignored. Luigi's has been around for a while. Luigi's has <gasps> won Dragon Warrior. <laughs> Luigi's has won 15 Open Cups. 15 in his history in his history and he took a six that's month like break one, that's like once a month between on average between NESL Zotech and the old mana grind tournaments 15 he's won it's crazy that is crazy spider roger 
no play on turn one, S decides to just pass, Not no innervate shade. And as a result, Ysera and all of her peeps will just comfortably wait. It's Dragon Warrior, I forgot. I yes, Ysera, that makes it Dragon Warrior. I want to delve into your creative mind here for a second, Dan. That's all I have, TJ. I don't have anything else in mind. <laughs> okay. Well, after that depressing statement, what if you had to add like one dragon that would just like unlock all the other dragons? Like if you had to, you, you can take the whole broadcast as long as you tell me by the end of the broadcast what this like answer what, is. How I would design a card to unlock other dragons? No, like what dragon would you implement in the game? Like if there was a dragon card, like from WoW lore? No, no, just it does, you don't even have to name a specific dragon. Just the effect of the card. Like the mana cost and the effect, if you had to create a card. Um, because I know how much you love dragon decks. I've been seeing you trying to experiment over the past couple of days um, with your dragon decks, and it seems like you've been disappointed in losses that you felt like you should have won. Uh, um, probably a dragon, a uh, three-mana dragon that does something similar to Arcane Explosion. You just need something that fits the curve a little bit better, and then it addresses the board because dragons are super powerful. It's like if you're holding a dragon, deal one damage to all enemy minions. So Dread Infernal Dragon. Kind of, but for three mana because it needs to fill the curve. Or even two mana. Two mana would make sense too. Okay. If you're holding a dragon, deal like one damage. It'd be like a 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Kamikaze Whelp. Explosive Whelp. Except it doesn't, except it doesn't damage your own minions. What? Explosive Sheep with Wings. With dragon wings. Explosive dragon. Explosive dragon. Yeah. It's what I call my sushi rolls at home. The explosive dragon. Should try it sometime. Cool. I will. Thank you. Keeper of the Grove. How about call that a dragon? Keeper of the dragon. And then it's like, if you're holding a dragon, deals two damage in sons. Just make the same exact card. <laughs> the same exact card. Four mana, two, four. There it is. <laughs> Or how about this? And really be a troll and make a druid only. Acolyte of dragons. <laughs> every time, if you're holding a dragon, every time this takes damage, draw a card. That's a worse acolyte of pain. <laughs> but you a get the strictly dragon. worse you acolyte get, of you pain. You get a dragon synergy. You could just play acolyte of pain, and then it does the exact same thing as if you don't need a dragon. I like. How about Drake's wrath? If you're holding a dragon, deal four damage. To all or deal minions. two damage and draw a card. Whoa, that's actually slightly better wrath. Yeah, pretty cool. How about Dragon Maiden? If you're holding a dragon, <laughs> how about if you're holding a dragon, gain a star and ladder? How about Dragnaros the Fire Lord? <laughs> if you're holding a dragon, Dragnaros. deal eight, <laughs> deal eight damage to a random minion. Wow, that's a pretty good card, actually. Um, Druid wants to definitely start outcarding warriors with pressure. That's one thing that ends up happening. Look, gets into the ancient floor. Really useful stuff. How about Drakthub? Enemy dragons cost five more next turn. <laughs> Just if you, only if you're holding a dragon. Only if you're holding a dragon. <laughs> Enemy dragons cost five more next turn. <laughs> Uh, all right. I didn't know what I, I was think, getting I think, myself. I, think, <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I asked that question. We've definitely exhausted all possibilities. So to answer your question, that is it. <laughs> okay. Track them. Thank you. I appreciate the <clears throat> insight. So, um, Drew has been relatively passive, and as a result, Warrior's been able to keep most of its health. And I don't mind setting up Doctor Boom this turn. Um, whatever Sylvanas steals, you can execute and set up Shield Maiden, so I think this is reasonable. Um, not to mention that you do have eventual opportunity to bomb the board with Ragnaros, so this is like a test for Big Game Hunter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, he can... Swipe Wrath. As long as... What if, what if his Shade dies? What if his Shade dies, though? I think that's unlikely. Huh? Unlikely, but what are the chances? <clears throat> if okay. it's Sylvanas dies, that's great. Sylvanas dies, steals Dr. Boom. Hey! Hey! Oh. Either way, it's okay. Because he can just wrath his own Sylvanas and yeah. take it anyway. That was very cute play. You attack, of course, with that shade. Yeah. You need to cash in. Wow. If it did any more damage to that shade, he'd have a re clean removal with uh, Execute and Death Bite, but he doesn't. And Shade is about to become another Dr. Boom next turn. A 7-6. 
Yeah. Okay. If you, yeah, I think you shield block here. Try and draw into execute or shield slam. It effect. It doesn't put a body on like shield maiden, but nah, actually, I don't know. Shield maiden might be. Yeah, why you can. it challenges. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. You're just not getting. You're not weaving in hero power, so you, right. the potential health gain is not as much, mm -hmm. um, which you might need. But like you said, it challenges it, so that that seems like it's more important in this situation. Ooh, Harrison Jones. Yeah, you know, Sp right, Spider Raj has definitely got the number. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way he's gonna get stopped this game. He's looked like he's played. I mean, he, he's lots got this. this he's got this matchup on lockdown specifically. Like, he's got Harrison Jones against the Warrior. Uh, he's being able to think of some of these moves really quickly. And this is what it was supposed to be. Luigi's earlier beat a Druid, a mid-range Druid, with the Warrior, but that's not supposed to normally happen here. Yeah. And it seems like <coughs> Roger is... He top. realistically might have to just, like, Ragnaros here and just hit Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. He goes for it. Dr. Boom would be excellent. Hey. No, oh. not the one he wanted. But that was just a shot in the dark, and that's going to be game. Force of Nature is enough mm -hmm. just to push through, and we tied ourselves up at one of these. Yeah. And, that, I mean, you look at that matchup on paper, and it's like, that's one of those classic matchups that you're like, okay, Druid has a pretty significant advantage. Right. There's sometimes, like you said, we saw earlier where uh, Luigi has managed to overcome Azuzu. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're, uh, Roger just knew exactly what to do in every situation in that game. It's true. It's true. It's too bad. I mean, he held on to that Ysera for a long time. I, I don't think he's playing those Blackwing Corruptors, perhaps. But he still had the dragon in hand. Those kinds of cards are just clunky to hold on for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> because you're holding your Sarah, you're holding a dragon, but you have no cards to synergize with it. So you're saying he might as well just play Black Knight Corruptors? Uh, well, you know, I think Dragon Warrior is really cool. It's definitely not as consistent across the board as uh, Control Warrior is. Mm. Some matchups are a lot better, some matchups are a lot worse, just because you're very conditional. Also, the problem with uh, dragon cards in general is the, the holding synergy that we were. You know, half mocking, but half exploring because it was a pretty cool thing. Um, it's, it's the fact that sometimes you have the dragons and you don't. Yeah. And so if you're not holding any dragons, you just you just have a vanilla 5-4 uh, for 5 mana, which is like just a worse Harrison Jones. Yeah. It's like you're either holding the dragons and you, you can't play right. them because they're too expensive, or you're holding the pieces that you need the dragons for. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like And it's, it's kind of like uh, the victim of having priest combos. Yeah. Where you have like Akanai independently, which is great. Um, or you have Circle of Healing, which is like okay, but if you don't have both, it's just like you get the exact combination you need. And it introduces the conundrum. You have like Blackwing Corruptor in your opening hand, and you have a dragon. Do you toss away that dragon because you yeah. want a better curve, but you get the better, better synergy there? So that's kind of like the drawbacks of dragons in, in general right now. And I, I've played so much dragons, TJ. I know. And I, I think I'm almost uh, given up for now. You know, Maybe yeah. I'll just go back to the ways of the hunter. Dragons. The making every single class as inconsistent as Priest yeah. since 2015. Seems like how it's boiling down to. Well, next matchup is going to be Warrior. Once again, taking on. This time it's going to be Warlock. So we've yet to see the Warlock from Roger. Let's see what type of Warlock it's going to be. If you guys didn't tune in yesterday, uh, the winner of the Redemption Series Group B was Lead Paint. And uh, he navigated his Dragon... Warlock, his Malagos Warlock, uh, to first place in that group yesterday, secured himself a spot in the land finals using that. So, pretty impressive showing. And that was despite every time he used Soulfire, it discarded his second Soulfire. Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. It was pretty brutal. The, well, I mean, I was, I was laughing my butt off. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I thought that humorous. And above it all, he still managed to qualify. Yeah. Like, because he... Like, every soul fire discard the other soul fire, which is inconvenient. The third time around, it didn't cause him to miss lethal, but it was just like, it was just a joke at that point. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Roger's going to bring out something like that, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, are you aware of how popular uh, Dragon Warlock is in... In Asia? In Asia. I'm not I too sure. I know that they experimented with Dragon Handlock. They were one of the first people to do it uh, over in the China server because yeah. they had... They had Dragon Wing Techni or Black Wing Technician. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting familiar with the cards, excuse me. Black Wing Technician into Twilight Drake into 
like Sludge Belcher, Sludge Belcher. and then you just have like this string of really powerful mid-sized minions that's hard to remove. But it was just kind of gimmicky, you know, not really anything too special. Plus, I think um, Handlock is just much more, like, you know, let's just call it uh, Vanilla Handlock. It's just really powerful with Mountain Giants because mm -hmm. uh, it's really difficult for decks like Grim Patron or even Control Warrior to deal with. Mm -hmm. This does seem like a traditional hand lock. We see Mountain Giant, Twilight Drake, and Molten Giants all in the starting hand, so that's a good indication. And, I mean, that's a pretty good threat, a pretty good hand with lots of threats. Oh, yeah, for sure. The Drake into the Twilight, or into the Mountain Giants are going to be really powerful. Um, do you prefer playing one or the other against Warrior? You've played a lot of Warrior, so which do you hate seeing more? It depends on how my removal lines up. Well, let's just say in this scenario you have an Execute. Um... You'd rather see the giant or the Drake? I'd rather see the giant. So you can remove because, it and the Drake's has less power? Yeah, because the Drake you can remove um, with other means. I mean, there's also BGH that you can remove the giant with, but like the Drake you can stall for more time and sure. until you see another removal. Like the Drake, you're not in like a huge rush to yeah. to like take off the board. Yeah, the damage adds up, but I'd rather like, okay, if he plays Twilight Drake first, you use your Execute. Then he plays Mountain Giant. You don't have a way to deal with it. Right. You're on a really short clock to try and find something to deal with it. Sure. So. I like this. Uh, if his opponent drops the Twilight Drake, silence it, you know, cash in a draw. Yeah, I don't know if you I necessarily like cool attack. I think Cool Taskmaster might be slightly better. Yeah. And then you, like, would you Cool Taskmaster your own Acolyte and then kill off the Silence Drake? So you get two draws? Well, I'd, I'd Acolyte that. first, if that was the case. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah, like, cool you get, get the draw first. first. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then second execute. Whoa! But you want to silence this and then trade into it. Yeah, and being able to Ooh, take out one Roger. of Roger! Eyebrows almost disappeared into his head. He's like, what? You play Iron Beak Gavel? But uh, fortunately, Roger, it seems like you haven't caught on to the fact that many warriors are playing. <laughs> Iron Beak Owls in the West. I'm not sure if yeah. it is in, in the Asia server. Yeah, there is room. I mean, for a while, Warriors were experimenting with lots of different tech cards. Like, for a while, yeah. every single Control Warrior list had, like, piloted Shredders. Now there's Owl proc the Execute. That is crazy value. Mm -hmm. And you can drop Armorsmith, too, to gain an armor. Why not? Oh, he has Thorsten, too, this turn. Uh oh. Okay. I'm actually somewhat curious about this. Yeah, I was looking at that and I was like, it looked like he never even moused over the mountain giant. And I was thinking, did he not remove it? Because, you know, spectator client takes a, a few seconds to catch oh. up to the actions. And he didn't. He just ignored it. Yeah, I'm actually really curious about that. But. Uh, at any rate, ends up just killing off the Thorson. That's probably going to just make him play his own Thorson. So yeah. that way he gets a full 10 card discount. Uh, I'm always. Actually, it's 9 cards, excuse me. He's one, holding 10 cards. One of the things that I always try to do against Handlock when I'm the Control Warrior player mm -hmm. is trying to be conservative with my removal. So I, I respect ah, the fact that Luigi is, is being very conservative because there's so many big threats that you have to worry about. Yeah, and one of the worst situations you can possibly be in is if you use all that removal early on, like you say, oh, I have second execute, I can use one, that's okay, but no, because then that second execute is actually going to go a lot quicker, especially if that's your mindset. It's going to take out a Doctor Boom or an Emperor Thorsan or a Ragnaros, and then you're basically reliant on either having armor, which is an unreliable way later in the game to remove something with shield slams, or winning out on a brawl which aren't the most consistent ways to uh, remove creatures. Yeah, I like what you said. Um, keeping keeping those executes for something else. You know that Thorazine can do five damage to a giant and uh, line up the removal elsewhere. This also sets up Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. Although I think he really wanted to take care of that uh, that Emperor as well. That That's a huge threat. Yeah. I'm not sure if he was really expecting that to come out when he made the plan in his head last turn. It's always a possibility on six mana, but you're more anticipating things like tap, Twilight Drake number two, tap, Mountain Giant, like, you know, maybe Sludge Belcher, Lothab. Shield block. Whoa. 
Mm. You don't want to be PH in the 3 So many other targets you'd rather use it on. Especially the upcoming Dr. Boom. It's like a Ren Black Hand that took one damage. Maybe you just... Um... Okay, so he's going to hover over Dr. Boom. I think maybe he's like, what if you just execute the, the Thorson and then just leave the... Giant. Oh, he goes for a brawl. 50-50 brawl. for his minion to win. And the Iron Peak Owl still stays alive. What a champion. Yeah. A, a brawl is effectively a two-card removal there. Like, it's it's a one card, one for two in that situation. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all you're going to hope for. Usually, at, later in the game, you're either going to use it to, um, like, snipe out two Molten Giants. Right. Like, throwing an Armor Smith and try to snipe out two Molten Giants. So, it's effectively sure. doing the same thing as that. Mm -hmm. And he holds on to the BGH, plus um, both executes later on for lots of different types of threats. Well, this is uh, what you can use to win back the board with Big Game Hunter. The follow-up is kind of meh. No. I guess you can use the Fiery War Axe to chop down the 1-1. One, one. That gives you two more mana. Play the Armorsmith. Uh, alternatively, you could answer Boom with Boom, but I'd never feel that great against it with Handlock, because Handlock can swing so easily. He did just use a Mortal Coil, though. Yeah, in what ways could he swing back from a Dr. Boom? He could BGH. Big, he can double Big Game Hunter right back, and then, um, or sorry, like he has one Big Game Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Because usually some people are playing two, and then uh, Boom Bot trades, and then just yeah. like hit the face. Shred your armor. And he's got that Ancient Watch on the board to absorb some of the Boom Bot hits. I guess Armor Smith's just really weak in this matchup. A lot of times, uh, some people take the idea that they just want get, to get it on the board so it's not going to do anything, but. It's fine if it's just sitting there because it really won't have high impact otherwise. You can do good in late game if you can hide it behind a Sludge Belcher. Mm -hmm. Or if you can plop it on the board as fodder for Ragnaros. Yeah. Or if you can throw it in for a Brawl. Those are like the three uses. Three main uses in this matchup. Or proc and execute so with it. Many possibilities. <laughs> so Dark Bomb... For sure, onto this big game hunter. I think this is where okay to drop a uh, molten giant. Just like start the victory charge. Yeah. Ah, Tony up the boom bot to make it complicated. I like it. How much are you gonna put a Luigi's on having a second brawl? Your Roger. Uh, definitely. If you've watched the previous broadcast in the day in that week, not in the day, but in the week, uh, it's higher than zero because there's people been playing. Double brawl. What are you nodding <laughs> and, and giving me a wake for, TJ? Higher than zero. Yeah, it's Whoa. higher than zero. If it's higher than zero, you have to at least think about it and consider the possibility. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if he has the possibility of double brawl... I don't think then... about anything unless it's higher than ten. Okay. You have very high standards. I do. <laughs> when it comes to plays that I play around, you got to really impress me. <laughs> Yeah, I think every single control warrior had double brawl so far this week. Maybe it's just time to play one of your big threats here. Dr. Boom. Yep. Rag? I don't know. Rag could have been dangerous. Because if it hits, like, Sunfear Protector, you're in lots of trouble. Because he could just siphon soul and start swinging back. This way, at least you have boom bots to try and clear up, even if he removes the Dr. Boom. And Rat could be used later in the game to try and snipe through a taunt wall. Yeah. I wonder. Rag is definitely one of those trump cards where, like, if they can't, if Hanlock can't deal with it, it's your way to just sometimes win the game. But of course, it always invokes bigger wrath from your opponents because of the molten giants. But if you see a bunch of molten giants played already, then Rag does get a lot, get stronger. Mm -hmm. And seeing Cybersol come out here is going to give him at least a window. It's going to open up more opportunities to use the Rag. Hmm. So you can take a couple of Molten Giant hits. All right, so an Execute onto the Molten Giant. Hmm. Can you set up Lethal for the next couple of turns? It does depend, right? If you can get, like, Death's Bite and the Whirlwind Effect on Gromash. What now? The Ancient Watcher being the only thing with Taunt poses a problem. Because if you 
the only thing you can attack into this turn is Ancient Watcher. To set up like the death by death rattle to um, go for a Grom next turn. So it's like he's gonna pave the way. Yeah, it doesn't you can just play like the armor smith here. Yeah. They can, allow they can to push be through. pretty resilient too. It's not like he's gonna shadow flame the <laughs> the two armor smiths. Oh. Screw your armor smith, man. Ooh. Well, there's a lot of things that he, that he can do to pose a pretty big problem. It's not bad. Yeah. I can play the Mountain Giant and the Sludge Belcher. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, you always are mindful of the combo from uh, Gromash. Yeah. It's not quite as frightening as, like, Druid combo, but it's still something you have to play around every turn. It's a lot easier to play around because all you need is, like, one taunt. You know it's a very uh, one-dimensional combo. It's like he, he has to find a way to hit face with one creature. He is three damage off lethal right now. And that mountain giant is problematic. Might want to execute that too. But he's running out of removal spots. This is where the handlock's really making a really strong push to seize back the board. Yeah. Because now mm. the warrior's in a spot where he's trying to set up lethal. But he's also in a spot where if he doesn't deal with the board, if he doesn't answer these threats, he's just going to die in the next couple turns. Right. I guess he could stall it out by playing things like Sludge Belcher, but that's pretty weak, all things considered. Get Rag. Rag would have to hit the Mountain Giant. Or maybe Face wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I think there's two good outcomes there. Because there'd be a slime left no, over. No, 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 he has double heal bot. He, hitting Face would be awful, I guess. You gotta go through that eight damage eventually. From the heal bot. All right, he's gonna execute the giant, and then uh, go ahead and try to push through. Oh, oh man, I wasn't anticipating him just going for it. <laughs> wow, but, uh, Spider Roger's got a lot of ways to handle this because he's Spider Raj. <laughs> does everything. The Spider Raj does. Spider Raj does. He puts himself in a position where he can... No, he can't, because Antique Heal Bot's almost certainly going to be played right. this Antique turn. Antique Heal Bot and then Taunt. Yeah. And that'll basically get rid of any opportunity <laughs> we just had at winning, because that was like his win condition. Right. Yeah, you could see... He was he, hoping Rag would yeah, be the finisher. He winced when he saw the Heal Bot come out. Ooh, that is domination on the board. Ooh, Roger rubbing his hands together. He's getting warmed up. <laughs> and unless... The only chance was if he drew Fiery War Axe. Can you imagine? Fiery War Axe to the face. Yeah. Rag shot. Field goal. He's still keeping that dream alive. Maybe Fiery War Axe getting a draw. Maybe his opponent won't play a taunt. Those are but he's got both. <laughs> yeah. Those are things that you... Or does he even have lethal that we don't on. see at the moment? He's got... Uh, 24, 26... Uh, no, he was short damaged by two, I think, for lethal. My seal for Argus. It's crazy. So he's on a brawl to just survive. Oh yeah, second brawl might be helpful. Nah, Shield Sam came way too late. Yeah. It's gonna be at 18. There's still gonna be, yeah, 19 damage left on the board. Oh no, no, he's gonna be good. He'll live. 12, 14, 19 damage, the 23 health. He has a chance. If he has a chance, if his opponent taps, it doesn't do anything else. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean the antique heal boss. So now it's basically that brawl that you were mentioning. And even then, it's going to be rough. Because a lot of the outcomes right, are... Right, the 2-3 has to survive. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Plays Ragnaros just to see where it hits. Where? Although I'd be scared to use up the good RNG because if it hits the Molten Giant, it might never happen again. Okay, he got rid of the bad RNG. got rid RNG. of the bad RNG. There we go. Yeah. Get it out of the system. I, I don't know about that from Luigi's, though. I guess getting out the bad RNG, if you believe in, like, 
if you're superstitious, but yeah. you're also revealing cards. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Because if you're the loser in that situation, not revealing cards is actually uh, a good thing because you're going to have to play that deck again. You have to find a victory. And Rack's not a card that's like a 100% um, control warrior um, inclusion. So, I don't know. Probably won't matter, but small things like that could end up making a difference. We'll sure. have to see. Luigi's on the ropes now. Well, I think he's still okay. I think he's got that patron warrior that he has to face off against, so he might just requeue this control warrior one more time. Mm -hmm. And then he's got Rogue versus the patron warrior, which yeah. should be okay. So I think um, I think he's still in a decent spot. Yeah. He's got the... Uh... I'm still not too sold on the Rogue matchup for patron warrior, mm -hmm. but... We'll have to see. It, it's a matchup that we haven't seen very much lately, just because of uh, Rogue has sort sort of fallen in popularity over the past couple weeks. I oh, know it's a shame. It is. I think Rogue's one of the more fun decks, just because the explosiveness is cool. Some of the the counting, um, you know. Of course, I listen to hype to talk about Rogue all yeah. the time. I love counting as well. Yeah, I like counting. I just you know I'm I'm not that great at it. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. Yeah, hyped. I'm sure you guys talk a lot, and he's like one of the biggest advocates for Rogue that exists on the entire face of the planet. And that's Gara right. for Shaman as well. See, everyone keeps saying that, but that's how you know that no one else has anything to say like about it if you just start going off the titles like, yeah, Gara, he's he's the best Shaman. It's like, wow, that's you don't know anything else to say about him. It's, beca it's becoming a joke just because his name is Gara Best Shaman. Well, his ID used to be that. Now he's just shorthanded to Gara. Oh, really? He changed yeah. it? His Twitch... His Twitch? No, 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 but oh. the, yeah, it, it, like he is in general his other handles. Like for example, Powder from Trig used to be White Powder, or uh, I didn't you know, know Purple that. Drink is now just purple. Yeah, he's just purple. Yeah, yeah. We're just waiting for a couple of other colors to join Archon. They they have the rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see if any players with colors can win any tournaments in the near future. Yeah, so, you know, Gara doesn't really focus too much on Shaman. He, he actually really likes, you know, classes like Hunter or Mage. He actually really loves Freeze Mage. I think Hunter would probably be the, the deck that I would call Gara's, not signature deck, but the one that he's probably played the most, at least over the past couple months. Yeah, I think people have associated him with Ramp Druid because that was a tournament he won with when, yeah. in the time when Hunter was dominant. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. <clears throat> Other than that, though, I mean, he doesn't really play too much Rogue, mm -hmm. and uh, Rogue is going to be that interesting class that Luigi's uh, brings to the table here and see yeah. if it can go all the way. The winner of this goes on to play the winner of Silent Storm uh, versus Korn Nico. Yep. We have a couple of Japanese fans actually here in the studio talking to me about Korn Nico. They're like, yeah, I really hope he does well. Um, you know, they, They're like, yeah, I saw him. You know, maybe he wasn't playing his best. It was like 5 a.m. in Japan. It's really tough. He's also really young. He's like 18, yeah. something like that. And uh, that, that kind of uh, combination of factors might end up being like a spot where you get really nervous or you're just uncomfortable. You're, you know, you're in a really bad time zone. Thousands of people are watching you. Yeah, we had an interview with him the other day, and um, we asked if he was like afraid of any of his opponents, if he was nervous or intimidated, uh, because he is young. He's not as well known, and some of these other players are a little bit bigger of names. And he said, "If you're afraid, then you've already lost." He said, said that. Yeah, that's very like Japanese philosophy. Yeah, and like, so, calm yourself. You know, inner peace. Yeah, so he said he, he has to have confidence going in because if he mm -hmm. doesn't have confidence, um, then he's he's pretty much already lost in his mind. So even though he's a young guy, uh, he's, he's very he's, wise beyond his years. He's also ambitious. He really wants to be successful and make a name for himself. In Hearthstone. In Hearthstone. Gotcha. Yeah, in Hearthstone. Well, you know, only a select few people get to really make it, unfortunately. Out of the the millions that play this game, there's a handful of people that are successful and then, or even like, you know, good. And then even within that so small section that are good, are uh, successful. And even within those are successful, some people don't always get what they want. You know, we have players who still, despite doing really well, don't get a lot of recognition, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, you know, people climbing ladder a lot. You look at Fibonacci, you look at Just Saiyan, you look at uh, even prior to this, Nyman, right? Yeah. They were all playing who climbed the ladder and didn't get a lot of recognition, and some do, and they can't handle it and ends up going south. So it's a really competitive field. Uh, I hope Cody Neko can definitely do it. It'd be cool to see some Japanese players rise to the top. Yeah. There's a lot of factors that go into being a, mm -hmm. a successful professional Hearthstone player. It's not just about it's about branding yourself as well. Sure. It's not just about being good at, at slinging cards. It's also about 
God. What? Slinging cards. It's effectively... We're not... Doing. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Dan doesn't like... When I say if you're cool, cards. you play cards. If you're really cool, you, you sling, sling cards. cards. <laughs> yep. Dan, don't go near that sword. <laughs> Why'd you say that as soon as we were off camera? <laughs> it's going to be warrior versus warrior. This is kind of what we thought about it. Roger took a bathroom break. Probably to put on his costume, save a life, and come back. Because mm. he's Spider Raj. But is it the black Spider Raj costume? Ooh, the evil Raj that mm. comes out. Yeah. Venom. Has he been able to battle against his inner demons? I don't know. Will he defeat Luigi's? I wonder where Luigi's names came from, because it. I mean, I, I obviously the the first thing that jumps to mind is like the Mario relationship. It's his first and last name. Oh, is his real name Luigi? <laughs> no. No. Oh. That's a pretty sweet last name. If your last name is Ez, with yeah. two Z's. And if your first name was was Luigi. Yeah, but he could be combining like the first half of his name with yeah, the last Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's it, though. All right, well, we have uh, Warrior versus Warrior, but it's Patron versus the Control-based. And this one is really tough. We've seen several approaches to this matchup. One is to be really defensive, armor up, play as little minions as possible, mm -hmm. and let your opponent combo and just exhaust them out. The second is to be a little bit more proactive, try to yeah. stay in control of the board and flip the aggression if it's appropriate. Yeah. You have a while before you have to actually decide which route you want to go. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go for the aggressive route, and then at the end, just say, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to armor up every turn, deal with whatever threat you put out, and then just wait until you run into threats. Armor. And we saw that with uh, in Legendary Series week number three, with Chalky bringing his Grim Page and Warrior. He was playing against Chang. And it was a game where literally for the last, like, eight turns... I think turns, it was the opposite. Chucky was playing Control Warrior, and uh, Chang was playing the, the combo. Oh, I thought that's what I said. Uh, um, you said Chucky was playing Patriot Warrior. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I just wanted yeah, yeah. to clarify if anyone misremembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chang was playing like the Miracle sort of Patriot Warrior, and for the last like 10 turns, all Chucky did was armor up, not playing creatures, because he knew that Chang just had all the combo pieces in his hand, and he knew the threshold of damage. You want to play a game? Let's play the game How Greedy Is Roger? Does he play Coin Acolyte? He is really greedy. It's a lot of greed. I didn't really like that game that much. I didn't get to play. It's too bad. Maybe next time if you're quick enough. Okay. Well, unfortunately, it just happened to work out where he doesn't have it. And that's why, ultimately, people would argue that you shouldn't play the Armor Smith unless you have a, a weapon guaranteed for an Acolyte. Or the greedier, the better. Right. This this actually was a small misstep. A lot of warrior players like KitKaz was telling me for a while that like you don't play the armor smith unless you know you can destroy the acolyte. You just you can get punished. Yeah. And this second card draw is pretty significant because um, he's gonna be able to start picking things up and get that battle rage going. Yeah. There's also an argument to where armor smith's a huge liability as the game goes on. Because you can get two Grim Patrons out of a Warsong Commander and a and a Grim Patron with Armor Smith. Right. So you want to get the value out while you can and get it killed while you can. Right. But you get punished by it with things like this. Yep. Alright, Death Bite. So he gets the opponent gets an extra card. You might not think it's the end of the world, but he got an extra card and he got the Battle Rage. So he got two extra cards from that. And he gets just the power up a little bit deeper. And if this next card... Holy. Yeah. Moly. That that's Dorsen a hand. is so huge here. Especially because next turn he can play something on board and then take a little bit more control. Battle Rage again. And then all of a sudden he just has like this full hand for Thorsten once more. Gets Warsome Commander. And he can put on a lot of pressure. His hand is godly. The only thing he's missing is like cheap spells, like Inner Rage and Whirlwind, to be able to proximate his Grim Patience, but he's got plenty of time. <laughs> Whoa! There it is. Speak of the devil. So, uh, do you play a, a Grim Patron here and then just activate it, or do you do you hold off and 
do something else, just play like a Frothing Berserker and toss it out just to get killed. No, uh, they can't do yeah. it. I think the Frothing Berserkers are like just as valuable as right. the Grim Patrons in this matchup. Well, and the Grim Patrons are like not the MVPs because there's so many big minions, it doesn't really get much value. Yeah, Frothing Berserkers, one of the main. It's like against Priest. You can set up big right. combos with Frothing Berserker late game, whereas. You just want to make the Grim Patrons really tough to deal with. Like right now, he has to execute a Grim Patron and attack into the other. That's just a pretty clean way, but I mean, it's just like one card. Oh, uh, it doesn't have to execute. You can cool task, I guess. What? Oh, you can cool task his slime. <laughs> oh, you think cool task is <laughs> I was like, what yeah, are you talking let's, about? Let's do that. What now? Yeah, I'm gonna set this Grim Patron up for to get killed by the Death Bite Whirlwind. Yeah. And then he, he can save the uh, Death Bite or something else. This also allows him to play Big Game Hunter and just start controlling the board. Yeah. But he chooses to armor up instead. It's fair because there are many targets. There's, there's sometimes um, Gromash mm -hmm. or Boo. Oh, a full hand! A full hand! Yep. And two of them are Frothing Berserkers and one of them's a Whirlwind. So that's really. Really clutch. Yeah. Oh, and the the cool taskmaster might be relevant too. Oh, and the grim patron and the battle rage. You know what? Everything. Well, I mean specifically the fact that it all plays into the combo of yeah. two frothing berserkers wombo combo. Yeah. Very true. Solid point. Answer the Thorsten with your own Thorsten. This one not quite as much value. Good thing you can play Ysera next turn. But it might that, be relevant. Yeah. Bad thing is. Like, how scary of a board can um, Roger develop here? Well, I think he wants to use Battle Rage again to draw more cards. And he wants to kill off Thorson. So he could uh, Whirlwind here and then Battle Rage execute. Yep. It's pretty awesome. That's very awesome. No Brawl yet for Luigi's? He might not even get an opportunity to use Brawl. That is quite the board. He's not going to even have uh, mana to execute, though. But he does have a full board and says, if you don't have Brawl, I win. Mm -hmm. Really cool uh, spot here. I think I definitely like the Cool Taskmaster over the, the Battle Rage because yeah. um, that's just a full board. You get an extra Grim Patient from it. Or you get two extra Grim Patients, excuse me. Oh, that Frothing Berserker is big. Sylvanas. Sylvanas is actually maybe a ticket for him to to fight back on the board here. He can clear kind off one of the Grim Patrons. Actually, you'd probably just take the nine damage and clear right. off the Frothing Berserker. I wonder. Or, oh, BGH. Yeah, I thought Big Game Hunter and Sylvanas is like the, the play here. Yeah. I guess you could fire War Axe and take the 9 damage, but I think I'd rather big game hunter. Yeah. I have no time for games. I still have 30 health. Yeah, but Dread Corsair can put a big problem into that. Hold on. How much is this? If he battle rages and he puts out the charge. Oh my goodness. Alright, that's uh, 5 plus uh, 10, 16. No whirlwind effects, looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. Drake Corsair is free, though. There's two Drake Corsairs. Uh, 16, 22. Hold on. He did this really fast. Okay. Barely All even right. thought about it. Yeah. I, I mean... It's always worth seeing if there is an opportunity to. He did a lot of damage, but I think he could have been like a few points off. Obviously, but it's one of those yeah. things where you just you probably want to count. And now, this is basically Luigi's chance to draw Brawl. He didn't draw it. And no. I think Grand Patron uh, just completely ran over Luigi's. Look at that play from earlier on where he was able to navigate through. Shield Maiden is not enough to gain life. There's still going to be a huge amount of damage way on the other end. The worst part about it is that he can gain 8 health. Yeah, he's going to leave space for this Frothing Berserker to also just do a lot of damage. And a lot, a lot has to do with the early game draw. 
Mm -hmm. You got an extra card. Meow. Okay, so that's uh, that's got to be lethal here. It's, it's lethal on. No, it's not lethal on. No. Um, Wait, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, it is. Just yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's rough. Very rough. But Roger is going to be the first player moving on to the finals. Yeah, he got second place, and he's back in the finals. Well done. Yep. Clearly very, very well-versed with the Patron War. Super fast. Yeah, he played that about yeah. the fastest I've ever seen anybody play Patron War. It's one of those things where, like, we always have to be, like, stopping and evaluate, but I think he's counting all the time. Like, yeah. in his mind, he's thinking about what the next uh, step is with how much damage he has. Well, we're looking at both players, and he's only... No excuses to you, Jay. We got wrecked. Yeah. yeah. I also had something in my eye for, like, half that last match. Oh. So those were... I think there was something, like, rubbing on my leg. So that's why the tears. Sorry about that. Yeah. But... Yeah, you know, that's why you were crying, I get it. Or is yeah. it because I was touching your leg? I don't know. A little bit of both. Roger goes to the finals, gets second place guaranteed, but that's not good enough just yet. He'll face the winner against Sonic Storm versus Coronaco. Yeah. And now that Luigi's is eliminated, that means all the native people from USA are gone from today. We have a Japanese player, a Taiwanese player, and a Canadian Chinese player. Mm hmm Yeah. Canadian and he was born in China, but born in China, moved to Canada. Yeah. It kind of identifies more with the Chinese scene. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, for the Season 1 finals of the ESL, he practiced with Titor Celestial, who helped yeah. him win the tournament. Yeah. And that ends up becoming the paving the way for him to get on Team Celestial. Really cool stuff. And I just want Sinus to play in more tournaments. He's a really cool player. Yeah, he's a fun guy, even though his awkward interviews didn't really do his personality justice. He's a, he's a really good kid. But Silent Storm's going to be looking to make his way back to the Legendary Series Land Finals. And Cornico is going to be looking to make a little bit more of a name for himself. That semifinal plus the finals will happen after this break.